Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB BOSS flash on the Gigabyte Ultra Durable B650MK. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do. We're going to go through quickly, tell you what things you need, some good practices, all that kind of stuff, show you how to download the file, how to put the file onto a flash drive, and also put it in the right format. And then we're going to do the actual flash itself on the motherboard. And uh, yeah, then after that, you should be ready to go with your new processor on your new board. And all that kind of good stuff. Now you're probably thinking, well, why do I need to do it on a B650 chipset? To be honest with you, at the moment, you really don't. At the time of recording, there aren't any processors actually on the market which won't work with this pretty much out of the box. So for a lot of you, this is going to be slightly irrelevant, but obviously as time goes on and when AMD finally get around to releasing their new APUs, we're going to be playing catch up with the motherboards, etc in terms of BIOS revisions, or perhaps at some point you've bought the motherboard and it's maybe been stuck on the shelf for a little while, so the BIOS is a little bit backdated. You don't have the greatest compatibility and getting a new BIOS update gives you a little bit more stability in terms of RAM, overclocking, expo profiles, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get on and get this done. So there's a few things you need to do straight away to actually find out which BIOS you need and also some specific components you will need to actually power the board and also to put the actual BIOS onto. So in terms of putting the BIOS onto the board, then you can need a flash drive. We always use this. This is a SanDisk Flare. This is a 32 gig one. You will need to format it to FAT32. So ideally make sure it's a drive that has nothing on it so you can format it. Uh, this has been very reliable for us. So we do recommend those. It'll be linked in the video description if you want to buy one. Other things you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a uh, motherboard to flash it onto. That goes without saying. Something to put the motherboard on, so we're just going to use the motherboard box, and might as well make use of it. Also, you'll need a power supply, so we've got our ATX power supply here. This is actually an SFX one, but the same applies. You'll need two connections connected to your motherboard, so make sure you've got those connected to your power supply if it's a modular one. So you're going to need the main 24-pin power connector, the one that goes on the motherboard over on this side, so that connection there. And also, you'll need your EPS connection, or your additional 12-volt, which is this one up here. Now. Most boards these days are going to be 8-pin. You can get away with just plugging in a single 4. Ideally, if you can, an 8 makes much more sense because you know it's definitely going to work and you're plugging it in the right side, etc. So that's absolutely fine. Make sure you've got all those bits and pieces. Once you've got all that ready, then we are ready to head over to the computer, go to the Gigabyte website and actually download the BIOS, extract it, rename it, and put it back onto our flash drive. So let's go over to the computer and we'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so this is our Windows desktop, so let's plug in our USB drive. And there we go, we have a new option for that, how exciting. So let's go to my computer, and we go over to our flash drive, which is this one there, USB drive D. And what we're going to do now, actually it's showing two, I oh, know it's the same one, it's just the extension of it. So what we want to do is we actually want to format this drive, so let's start off. So you're going to want to make sure it's the FAT32, which currently is the default for this type of thing. If you've got an XFAT, it won't work, or NTFS won't work. It has to be FAT32. If you've got a drive which is larger than 32 gigabytes, you won't be able to do FAT32, in which case you'll need to create a smaller partition on the drive. We've done a video for that also, although personally, I don't recommend it. Ideally, get a drive 32 gigabytes or less. It only needs to be about 32 megabytes because that is the size of the actual flash. So even if it's a really, really old drive, it should be fine. The allocation unit size, you set to default and volume label. If there's anything in here, I would definitely try and blank it out. Leave that completely blank. If you put something in there, some drives don't like it and it just won't read it properly. So ideally leave that blank. So when you're happy, click start. This will erase everything on the drive as you've got the information there, warning, formatting will erase all data. So when you're happy, click OK. If you don't want to, click Cancel and find another drive. So we're going to click OK. And there we go. Format is complete, so we can close these windows down. That is great. So now let's open up our web browser. I'll put links for this in the video description for the BIOS. Now if you go to the Gigabyte site, you'll notice here, this is really important. This is the revision of the board. Now if you look in the bottom corner of the motherboard, is down here. You're probably seeing some B-roll of this I filmed a little bit earlier. The revision number will be stamped on the board. Also, you can check out the motherboard box if you've still got it to hand. Look for the serial number and it will also state the revision number. Again, you'll be seeing that from some B-roll we filmed. 
So our particular board is a revision 1.1, the slightly updated version. So just make sure we've got the right one selected. When you have, head over to the support tab. And if we scroll down a little bit here from the download section, at the bottom here, we've got BIOS. There's only ever been two for this board at the moment. So let's go ahead and click on that. So the original release version was version FB, which was July the 14th. And the one that is updated is FCD, which has the new Agisa 1.0.07C. Uh, there will be a new one out shortly because uh, 1008 is out already, but they just haven't updated this. So anyway, we're going to get this one. So click on the download section here. And very shortly, you'll get this pop up asking you where to save it. I'm going to save it to the Windows desktop. Just makes sense, easier to manage. So save there. You can save it wherever you want to. This is going to be a compressed file. So Windows actually has a built in decompression tool. So you don't need to use WinZip or anything. You can literally right click on the actual file we've downloaded and just choose extract all within Windows. It will ask for a destination and we'll let it go straight to the desktop where we already are. And then it's going to show us the extracted file. So here we are. There is the actual file there. So that is the BIOS file. You can tell it is because it's 32,000 kilobytes, which is 32 megabytes. So all we need to do is to actually rename this. So we're going to rename this to gigabyte.bin. Now, if you can't see the file extensions, then you can go to the uh, view section, I think it is, and show, and you can choose file name extensions. And there we go, it just shows file name extensions if they're not already showing. So highlight this, click again, or you can choose right click and edit. And we're just gonna erase all of this. I'm gonna choose to call it gigabyte dot bin, B-I-N. And when you're happy, press enter. Now it'll say here, if you change a file name extension, it may become unusable, or are you sure you want to change it? Yeah, that's absolutely fine, because that is the intention of what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna click on yes. So now what we can do is we can actually copy this file or cut it and paste it onto our flash drive. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna choose copy. Then I'm gonna to go to our USB stick. And then I'm gonna right click again, and I'm gonna choose paste. You can use Control V if you wish. So there we go. That is our blank drive, but now it has our gigabyte.bin ROM file or BIOS update file. So that's it. We're pretty much ready to go. So we can eject this folder now or this uh, drive. So you go down to the bottom here, right click and choose eject ultra USB 3. And there we go. So now the drive is able to be taken out of the machine and we can start the flashing process. So now we've got our file, we're ready to try and flash it into our machine here, or our motherboard. So there's nothing actually on the board. I get asked this a heck of a lot. People saying, Mike, can I do it when I've built the PC? Generally, I think most people will probably get to the point where the system doesn't work after it's fully built and then they need to flash the BIOS. So what I would suggest to do, the best thing to do to prevent the system from trying to actually boot is just to remove your RAM. So if you've got your processor installed, you've got your AIO installed and mounted, etc., the thermal paste, graphics card, all the cables wired, then you can, if you want to, just remove the RAM. Now for me personally, I think in terms of actually doing diagnostics and fault finding and kind of limiting the amount of other influences that can make your system not work, I would suggest doing it on a base board. But obviously if that isn't possible, do whatever works for you. But if you've got lots of things on the motherboard, there could be maybe a bad stick of RAM. You could have a short circuit in some of your wiring. Your front panel USBs could be shorted. There's loads of things which could prevent a PC from booting. So by taking those out of the equation, makes life a little bit easier. Anyway, with that said, let's get things connected up. So we do need to connect up our 24 pin main power connector, which we've got coming off of our thermal tape power supply here. And we'll just plug that into the motherboard. Next, we need to plug in our EPS connector or our eight pin power connector. This goes at the top of the motherboard and you'll see there are little retention clasps on there. This one goes in with the clasp facing inwards, which is slightly unusual. Most of them go with it facing outwards. It will only physically fit in one way anyway. They are keyed specifically so they won't fit uh, in the wrong way. So that is ready. What you wanna do now is to plug in your USB stick 
into the BOSS flashback port. Now, if you're not too sure which one you need to use, if you look at your motherboard's rear I.O. shield, which is one of these, you'll see it tells you what, what things are. So it tells you that the USB flashback button is the one in between your USBs there. And if you look really carefully, actually on the shield, it does say USB type C, and above that one, it says USB BIOS. So that is, on this motherboard, the red type A port. So that narrows it down, because there's only one red type A port, the other one's a USB type C. So it's kind of impossible to plug it into the wrong one. So we're gonna get our drive, plug it in here. So that is the correct port. So you should be able to still see all the blue ports, all the black ports, and the USB type C. So that is it ready. Now we can apply power to the power supply. So just turn on the switch on the power supply. Just, that is now ready. So what I generally do now is press and hold the BOSS flashback button until you see some form of activity either from your USB stick, if it's got an LED in it, or you'll see the LED actually on the board itself. So let's do that. I'll just do it for the count of three. One, two, three. And straight away, hopefully you can see that on camera. If I twist it around a little bit, you can see that the LED is now flashing and also our PSU actually started going as well. This is a zero fan model, so it will stop after a few seconds anyway. So what we want to do is just to keep an eye on the flashing LED now. You'll probably find it'll change speed, so it'll start flashing at one speed. Then once it's read the file, it'll then start flashing at different speed. And then we're basically waiting for the light to either completely stop flashing and extinguish itself, i.e. it's off, or the light will remain solid at the end. This is the first time I'm doing this board, so I'm not entirely sure. So we'll find out sooner or later. For most people as well, you'll find that your power supply, if the fan is spinning, once the process is finished, it should turn it all off and the fan should stop. But primarily, you wanna be keeping an eye on your flashing LED. So we'll let that go for a bit and uh, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so I'm not sure, but I think the light is slightly faster now. So I'm guessing this is the tail end of the programming stage. We're looking for a reboot any second, or at least for the light to turn off. And there we go. Heard the power supply click off, and our BIOS USB flashlight has turned off. I'm not too sure whether it's going to actually turn itself back on, or whether or not that is done. It appears that is done. Excellent stuff. So essentially that is it, it is now done. The power supply has switched itself off. So at this point now, the choice is entirely up to you. Turn the power supply off, assemble the rest of your components and fire it up to make sure that the system actually powers on, self-tests or posts. Or you could go for broke and just put it in your system, do the whole thing and hope and pray for the best. That is entirely up to you, but the rest of it does have to be followed. I do get this question quite a lot. So before you actually type it in the comment section already, Yes, you do have to format the drive to FAT32. Yes, the drive does ideally need to be less than 32 gigabytes to enable you to do FAT32. Like I said previously, if you have a larger drive and you don't have access to anything 32 gigabytes or less, you will need to create a smaller FAT32 partition on that drive. But as I've said again previously, that doesn't always work. Not all USB BOSS flashback mechanisms have the uh, complexity to recognize individual partitions. So if you're experiencing any problems and you have already done this with a larger drive, with a smaller partition, that potentially could be the reason why. Other things to check out as well, make sure that the drive is formatted with the MBR formats rather than GPT. If you're not too sure, we have done a video on that as well. I'll try and link all of this information in the video description. So if you're having problems, you can just uh, look out at the other videos and hopefully it will get you on your way. If all of that fails, we do have a Discord, which you're more than welcome to join, although we do get a lot of things about bosses, so potentially a lot of these problems can be alleviated by just watching the other videos. You'll get an answer very quickly. But yes, if it does fail, head over to the Discord and go into one of the technical support rooms, state the nature of your medical emergency, and we'll try and help you as best we can. I think that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. 
If, as always, there's anything else you need, stick in the comment section below. If you need technical support immediately, go onto the Discord and we'll do what we can. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.